This is the B2X300, a massive, crazy looking i3 style 3D printer kit. And it's one of the highest quality kits I've actually tested on this channel. But is it right for you? Well, kit reviews are quite a bit more involved than ready to run 3D printer reviews. So grab yourself a nice drink, get comfortable, and let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse. Before I talk about this 3D printer, I need to explain a little history. The B2X300 is produced by a company called Be Very Creative, located in Portugal. And I've reviewed one of their machines before, way back in 2016. Unfortunately, that didn't go very well. So you can imagine my surprise when they reached out to me to conduct a review on their latest kit aimed at the maker market. This thing. This machine seriously stands out with a build volume of 300 by 200 by 300 in the Z. It's a little larger than many other i3 style printers and it has a whole suite of modern 3D printer features such as mesh bed leveling, filament runout sensing, auto power loss recovery, and my favorite bit, no limit switches. You need a good and rigid frame to do this right, but instead of running physical limit switches to each axis, this thing literally drives the axis until it collides with the frame and the TMC2130 Trinamic drivers sense this collision and use that to home instead. Less parts, less wires to run, very, very clever. Oh, and did I mention that there are 256 micro steps, making it on par with the recently released Prusa Mark III S. The frame is seriously ridiculous. There's no other way to describe it. It comes on these two steel plates, almost like a gigantic metal airfix kit still attached with sprues. Very efficient for shipping, although I was dubious about removing the parts without leaving sharp dags all over the edges, but it's surprisingly effective and leaves quite a clean break. But one complaint here, this is steel, and the powder coating on the parts like this means that those break points are raw steel exposed to the elements after you snap them free. Now, I didn't do this on mine, but I would recommend adding a little bit of paint over these exposed areas, or maybe even oil, if you're in a highly rust-prone environment, just in case, because it is now raw steel uh, exposed to the elements, and 3D printers do rust. Assembly of the B2X300 really does live up to the promise of being a kit for makers. It's time-consuming, yet enjoyable, with superb instructions. I spent quite a few chill evenings in the garage with a Twitch stream running as I attach the various parts together and there is a lot of parts. Wiring on the other hand is a little bit more challenging, but the frame has plenty of areas to secure it with zip ties and I mean plenty. Lots and lots of holes, slots and gaps to attach all kinds of things. The aesthetic is definitely divisive. You either love it or hate it. Personally, I quite like it. It's pretty brave. It feels like it's been triangulated to within an inch of its life, but really it does make this thing overall lighter and easier to carry around, but it's still really quite rigid. I'm just thankful they weren't tempted to make it bright yellow as their, their company name might suggest. Anyway, for all its smarts, interfacing with the B2X300 is actually pretty average. Just look at this sad little thing. Look at it. It works fine through the click wheel interface, but it feels totally out of place with the rest of the design. You load G-code onto the SD card, which is fairly standard, though you could also tether it if you want, but that's about it. Something fairly awesome and worth noting though is that this machine is fully open source. Now, not everything is released yet, but you can currently find the firmware and the 3D printed parts for the frame, and they post regular updates on the B2X300 forum. Just today, I found that there's a little handle which you can add to make moving it around easier because it, it is a bit hard to carry. And I'll probably print that after filming this and update you guys on Twitter as to how it turned out. Now is the time to talk about what I assume the two in the name refers to, that hot end. Never before have I felt so conflicted about a hot end and extruder implementation. To clarify, it's dual, two nozzles, which is great, right? Well, it's dual in line. No fancy lifting, no two-in-one, no IDEX, dual in line, like the MakerBot 2X from, what, 2012? This nozzle arrangement is mechanically simple, but damn do I dislike it. You see, the nozzles need to be exactly level for it to have any chance of working at all, 
I need to ensure they stay like that, even though they thermally expand and contract, you need to control the using and nail the offsets. If your print warps up at all, there's a very high chance that the second nozzle will just smash into it and ruin the print. And even if you implement Z-Hop, this can still happen. Thankfully, the hot end design of the B2X300 does allow for small vertical adjustments with a set screw to get them as accurate as you can, and mine are pretty darn close, but we'll talk about that more later. For now, let's talk about these. These are probably the longest Bowden tubes I've ever seen, and on top of that, this machine takes 1.75 millimeter filament. At any given time, the extruder is pushing this much material down this thin tube. My first small test prints worked perfectly. No issues at all using the Cura profile provided. However, once prints started getting more complex and requiring more frequent retractions, well, they just started failing. Again and again and again, they jammed and stopped extruding. I had no idea what was going on. And honestly, it was maddening, um, not knowing exactly what was happening. In desperation, I actually moved one of the extruders down closer with a shorter PTFE tube and it actually worked really well. This is a ghosting test and the black lines me just using a marker to see extrusion rates, but it printed great. Um, so what gives? I got back in touch with the team over at Be Very Creative and they sent me a checklist to figure it out. And one of the items on that checklist was to use an oiler to season the all metal hot ends. Yeah, I remember oilers being popular a few years ago, but I never bought into it. I've never actually used them on any machine before. In my experience, oil is used on the lead screws and the linear axes, not on filament, surely. But they did have a design all ready to go. And sure enough, I found they actually had printed it. It was in the bottom of the box. So I applied some high temperature oil. Literally all I had on hand was some sunflower seed oil, but I applied it to the sponge and then did a test print. And you know what? It bloody worked. It didn't just work, it worked really well. There was no more skips at all. You do need to however be very careful not to apply too much oil, like I did, because it gets into the filament and it stops adhering to the print bed uh, because it's obviously oily. But after a while, we went from this to this to this. I don't do things in halves. This one-way bearing is an all-in-one design with tons of retractions and small movements. And just look at it. Look at it. It's probably the cleanest FDM print I've done so far this year, and it works really well. It's ridiculous. For a Bowden like this, I never, never, ever expected it. It was printed at 150 micron layer heights with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle in the red PLA provided. I went from being mega frustrated to absolutely blown away, all because of one tiny detail using an oiler. I've since actually removed them, and it seems that they've done a good job of seasoning both all metal hot ends. So, I mean, the problem might come back, but right now I've done lots of tests and it just seems to be working well. Another thing I do need to mention is I removed the filament outage sensors because I'm in here all the time, and it's just another thing in the way of the filament feed, which I don't want. And look, uh, filament running out is not gonna happen to me, but it doesn't detect jams. These sensors are just little micro switches. They're only for filament run out. But a filament run out sensor is probably something you'll find very handy because most people don't work in the same room as their machine all the time. And you'll probably need it for these absolutely tiny spools they sent. Um, I've never seen a roll this small for, fi for filament. 330 grams of PLA on this. Yeah, that's gonna run out pretty quick and you're gonna need that sensor. Knowing I could now print successfully, I embarked on my standard range of tests, starting with my clearance and tolerance gauge. And no surprise here, after doing the one-way bearing, it worked perfectly all the way down to 0.15, printed with a raft because that's generally how I test it. And even the text in the middle of the model is really crisp and clear, and the lettering is easy to read. It's just, it's a very, very good result. The Gay Ransom Cat throws support material into the mix and this print turned out really well. The surface and details are very, very clean though there was a little bit of stringing and a little bit of blobbing, especially near where the support material was. But the improved drivers do really seem to make a difference to the surface quality of these sort of models. At this stage, I do have another confession to make. To remove any potential issues for these first few test prints, I actually unscrewed the second nozzle. I used to do this all the time on my dual extruder machines back in the day when I was only printing single material but this review will not be fair without doing some proper dual color testing. Initially, I just wanted to see if the two nozzles could coexist, so I did two cubes 
with a circular purge tower, and I did complete warping on the yellow due to the new oiler I added, it'll settle down after a few prints, but even with the purged, there was some color cross contamination. This dual color cube is one of the B2X300's test models, and again, print quality is fantastic, but again, there's some color bleed from Extruder 2 as it's passed overhead and oozed a little. Um, I'm becoming more partial to an ooze shield instead of a, tower, a purge tower. They don't seem to work as well as I'd like. So in future, I'll be testing out an ooze shield to see if I can get a better result. But look, personally though, I would view the B2X300 like I used to view the Replicator 2X. It's a dual color capable 3D printer if you need it. But 95% of the time, I'm only going to need one color and I'll be unscrewing the nozzle for that use. To finish up, I wanted to try something big in another brand of PLA, so I did this thing. I'll explain in a future video what this actually is, but it's curvy and it came out looking really pretty at 0.15 millimeter layer heights in a very old roll of translucent aqua PLA filament. It actually took over 14 hours to print though, because that default profile is pretty slow. Time for that juicy conclusion. What are my final thoughts on the B2X300? from Be Very Creative. Well, it went from me being concerned about another lemon review to absolutely loving this thing. The print quality and accuracy I'm getting off the single color models is a little bit ridiculous. Um, the default Cura profile is quite slow and the Bowden design is certainly a weird one, but look, it prints so well that I'll be using this again for many of my future mechanism designs. It just, it's accurate enough for me to depend on to do these really intricate little parts. And yes, you can print dual if you like, but I feel like it's a fairly poor implementation in what is otherwise a very capable up-to-date machine. The provided and recommended spools are hilariously tiny and it looks like even Be Very Creative hasn't quite figured out a great spool holder for them yet. And the aesthetic won't be for everyone, but I personally quite like it. It's also very much a DIY 3D printer and I need to stress that it'll only be as good as you make it. Forget to plug in something on the board or plug something in wrong and that's on you. Which limits my recommendation to those who really know what they're doing. If you've already built a 3D printer kit before, like the cheap, cheap ANET A8 for example, but you want to upgrade to something a bit more capable, a lot more capable, then you'll feel right at home assembling this thing. But you'd have to spend a little bit more. The price point for the B2X300 is 650 euros X VAT. That's roughly 750 US or just over 1,000 dollar redos, which places it as a direct competitor to the updated Prusa Mark III S. But which one should you get out of the two? Well, it comes down to what your requirements are. For example, glass bed or magnetic print bed from factory. Do you value a direct driven single extruder or do you want that dual Bowden? Both machines have the same high quality drivers and in my opinion, best of class assembly experience. And I think they're both incredibly capable. So the choice is up to you. You can find purchase links for the B2X300 below and full disclosure, this review has been my own personal opinion. Be Very Creative sent me a machine free of charge for purpose of review. And I really did warn them after previous experience that I was gonna be very, very honest. So props to them for having faith in their machine. And if you found this video useful or you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna see future reviews, tutorials, projects, all sorts of things in the wonderful world of 3D printing, don't forget to subscribe to Makers Muse because it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. And with all that, I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later guys, bye.